Hi, hello once again my students and this time we are continuing in the path of educational content devoted to political systems. This video is supposed to be published with a hashtag 2 number, so number 2, in the series devoted to political systems. And in this, in this video I want to sort of give you a first look at uh, what is sometimes described as forms of political power. You can see those people in charge, those politicians, you, you, uh, you tell to yourself they have power. Okay, but what exact forms that political power can take? Uh, how does it like translate into the way they do things when they are in charge? And in order to show you the forms of political power, I will compare today two European constitutions, which, are, which correspond to two very different political systems. I will compare the constitution of France with the constitution of Finland. You remember that uh, in the first video, I was comparing the constitution of Uganda to that of India. So now we focus on the European continent and we have two European constitutional systems, the French and the Finnish. So first I go to the constitution of France, uh, to the constitution of October 4th, 1958, just to give you like a general thing about that constitution. The constitution of France or the constitutional order of France is all about power. Uh, many constitutions, for example, the, that of India or that of Uganda, those uh, uh, which I discussed last time, as well as the, as the constitution of Finland, which I am going to discuss later on today, have like Im important sections or important attention devoted to like objectives, strategies, values, principles and whatnot. The French constitution is all about power. Here is the, uh, here is the, the table of contents. It starts on sovereignty and then it goes to the president of the republic. Just to give you a general idea, uh, the French constitutional system, the French political system, is frequently called the presidential system. Uh, the president in France has really a dominant position in the political game. Uh, he's like the big player. Okay, the government of the Republic, in accordance with the Constitutional Statute of June 3rd, 1958, has proposed the French people have adopted and the President of the Republic hereby promulgates the Constitutional Statute worded as follows. Preamble. The French people solemnly proclaim their attachment to the rights of man and the principles of national sovereignty as defined by the Declaration of 1785, confirmed and complemented by the Preamble to the Constitution of 1946, and to the rights and duties as defined in the Charter for the Environment of 2004. And we go to the Articles on Sovereignty. The ar Article 5, uh, the Article number 1, by the way, in that constitution is out of any specific section. It says, France shall be an indivisible, secular, democratic and social republic. It shall ensure the equality of all citizens before the law, without the distinction of origin, race of, or religion, it shall uh, respect all beliefs. It shall be organized on a decentralized basis. Here is an interesting thing, uh, which demarks visibly from the constitution of India, which we saw last time, whilst India is by definition, by constitutional definition, a federal state, because it is composed of states which form a federation, France shall be an indivisible republic. Indivisible means that there is no way there is a federal structure. 
if you want to federalize France, like inside, you need to change the constitution. Okay, sovereignty. And how, how they define their sovereignty. The language of the Republic shall be French. So Article 2 is essentially about the symbols of sovereignty. The language, the national emblem, the national anthem, the maxim and the principle. Now Article 3 defines sovereignty in terms of who exactly is sovereign. National sovereignty shall vest in the people who shall exercise it through their representatives and by means of referendum. No section of the people nor any individual may arrogate to itself or to himself the exercise thereof. Suffrage may be direct or indirect as provided for by the Constitution. It shall always be universal, equal and secret. This is like the game of democracy, which you can see in that Article 3. Uh, no section of the people nor any individual may arrogate to itself or to himself the exercise thereof. It means that if you want to do anything in that political system, like a, uh, if you want to be a big player, you need to, have, to be backed like a, by a strong electoral result. Because it is said that the national sovereignty shall vest in the people and no section of the people may arrogate to itself the exercise thereof. So you need like a strong popular backup from the part of voters to have uh, any important power. Article 4. Political parties and groups shall contribute to the exercise of suffrage. They shall be formed and carry on their activities freely. They shall respect the principles of national sovereignty and democracy. Okay, so this is so as you can see, sovereignty in the case of France is defined by symbols in Article 2, by the general principle of uh, national sovereignty vested in people, so like the basic principle of, of democracy. And then sovereignty is defined in terms of the role of political parties and groups. Once again, if you remember the Constitution of India, which we were working with in the first video, uh, their sovereignty is very much territorial. In France, it is a different approach. Now, the core of my today's exposition, so forms of uh, political power, will briefly review or, or, or have a brief glimpse at the forms of political power held by the President of the Republic, respectively in France and in Finland. Here is the French one. The President of the Republic shall ensure due respect for the Constitution. He shall ensure by his arbitration the proper functioning of the public authorities and the continuity of the state. He shall be the guarantor of national independence, territorial integrity and due respect for treaties. The President of the Republic shall be elected for a term of five years by direct universal suffrage. No one may carry out more than two consecutive terms of office. The manner of implementation of this article shall be determined by an inst institutional act. Now, let's quickly jump to the Constitution of Finland, just to compare the position of the President uh, with that of France. So, we have... Uh, first of all, we have to find the President in that Constitution. So, I look for the president. Okay. You can read here that the governmental powers are exercised by the president of the republic and the government, the members of which shall have the confidence of the parliament. Just a nuance. 
but in the French constitution, the first time the president is mentioned, it is in a section specifically devoted to the office and the powers of the president. In the Finnish constitution, you can see that president is uh, mentioned jointly with the government and with the parliament. That already suggests much more balance uh, in the execution of those powers. Let's look for further prerogatives of the president. We have to scroll all the way down of that constitution. You can see that we start with the parliament and the representatives. Then it goes like a long chapter. Parliamentary activity. We go down, we go down in that text. We look for the president. Okay, let's look for the president. The, yes, and finally chapter 5, the president of the republic and the government. The president of the republic is elected by a direct vote for a term of six years. The president shall be a native-born Finnish citizen. The same person may be elected president for no more than two consecutive terms of office. Now, two remarks, uh, like uh, for quick comparison uh, with uh, the French president and the French uh, political system. Of course, as you can see here, the president is mentioned much later in the constitution, in, in, in much like, like later a chapter of the constitution in the Finnish case, and together with the government. In France, the president it mention, is mentioned right in the beginning. We can so whilst the French political system is a po is a typically presidential one, the Finnish political system is what we call a parliamentary one. There is a president, but that president has relatively weaker uh, position. Now, the first like specific form of political power. So the time during which a president is president. In the case of France, it is five years, and in the terms of Finland, it is six years. So one, one more year. So in terms of duration, the Finnish president seems to have uh, like uh, slightly more time, and time times office uh, gives more power over time. Uh, that's like one difference in favor of the Finnish president. Now, uh, there is a, a, a nuance here. The president shall be a native-born Finnish citizen. In the case of France, if we go back to the French constitution, there is no such mention. We know that the president of, re of the Republic shall be elected by an absolute majority of votes cast, but there is no mention of his or her birth. What does it mean? It means that in France, that uh, limitation to French-born French citizens can be introduced, but it doesn't have to be introduced in the Constitution. It can be introduced in, a, in an act of lower order, like, uh, like a normal parliamentary legal act. In the Finnish case, that general rule that the president has to be a native-born Finnish citizen, it is in the constitution. So in order to change it, you need to change the constitution. The more things we put in the constitution, uh, the more sort of we freeze them because the constitution in all the legal system of the country the constitution is the hardest to amend to modify once something is put in the constitution it is almost like like cast in iron it is it, it is really solid a long term 
What else about the president? The regime of uh, election is virtually the same in both countries. So in Finland, uh, the candidate who receives more than half of the votes cast in the election shall be elected president. If none of the candidates has received a, a majority of the votes cast, a new election shall be held between the two candidates who have received the most votes. In the new election, the candidate receiving the most votes is elected president. If only one presidential candidate has been nominated, he or she is appointed president without an election. Let's go back to France and let's see what they have there. The President of the Republic shall be elected by an absolute majority of votes cast. Absolute majority means more than half. It is like a majority, a, a, a vocabulary thing. Just remember when you study political systems, absolute majority means more than 50% of votes. If such a majority is not obtained in the first ballot, a second ballot shall take place on the 14th day thereafter. Only the two candidates polling the greatest number of votes in the first ballot, after any withdrawal of better placed candidates, may stand in the second ballot. Uh, so in both countries, in France and in Finland, we have a two-stage presidential election, a two-phase uh, two presidential election. Uh, there is the first round and the second round. Now, uh, why doing that? Um, it is the thing about democracy and forms of political power. In the democracy, in a democracy, a president is really strong when he or she is first of all elected directly by voters, by citizens, and not by the parliament. And secondly, that president is really strong when he or she has a strong voters' support. So when they receive like a big chunk of votes cast by the citizens. And that two-round system precisely serves to sift out the weaker candidates and to make sure that the person who is the president has like a really strong popular legitimation among voters. The process of, uh, now let's stay in France and let's go a little bit along those presidential election and presidential prerogative. The process of electing a president shall commence by the calling of said election by the government. So the government, the Council of Ministers, calls the presidential election. There is a subtle form of political power, sort of hidden in the, uh, between the lines. The government can choose, uh, technically, if, if, we have shall, uh, if we have such a sentence in the Constitution, the process of electing a president shall commence by the calling of said election by the government. Technically, the government, so basically the prime minister, in concert with the ministers, can choose the exact moment of calling the election. It is one of the form of what we call the soft political power, sort of between the lines of the constitution. And this soft power is immediately balanced or partly neutralized in the next sentence. The election of the new president shall be held no fewer than 20 days and no more than 35 days before the expiry of the term of the president in office. There is that subtle play of 15 days. Should the presidency of the Republic fall vacant for any reason whatsoever, or should the Constitutional Council, on a referral from the government rule by an absolute majority of its members, that the president of the Republic is incapacitated, the duties of the President of the Republic, with the exception of those specified in Articles 11 and 12, shall be temporarily exercised by the President of the Senate, or if the latter is in turn incapacitated by the government. Here we have 
once again sort of hidden between the lines, another form of constitution or, or political power. It is the form of political power which is sometimes called impeachment. Uh, you can read here that the Constitutional Council, on a referral from the government, can decide that the President of the Republic is incapacitated. So, they can try those two bodies together, so the Constitutional Council and the government can try to sort of wrestle the President out of the political system. For example, they can force him to accept that he or she is incapacitated. They can prove that he or she has been repeatedly taking stupid steps, stupid decisions which were harming the Republic. And then it can be proven that the, that the president is incapacitated. Of course, I haven't heard so far of such a, an open conflict between the Constitutional Council and the government from, from, uh, from one part and the president of the French Republic on the other side. Yet such a possibility exists in the system. Let's go back to Finland and see something more about their president and the position of their president. Interesting thing here. The right to nominate a candidate in the election for president is held by any registered political party from whose candidate list at least one representative was elected to the parliament in the most recent parliamentary elections as well by, as by any group of 20,000 persons who have the right to vote. The time of the election and the procedure of the election of a president are laid down by an act. It is interesting. It gives subtly, once again in somehow a hidden form, a big power to political parties, especially to those strongest ones. Let's read it once again. The right to nominate a candidate so, the right to put a candidate into the presidential elections belongs to any registered political party from whose candidate list at least one representative was elected to the parliament in the most recent parliamentary elections. So, we have a sequence. We have like a sequence. First of all, a political party has to be registered. Then, it has to compete partly successfully in parliamentary elections, so as to introduce at least one representative to the parliament. And once this is done, such a party gets the right to nominate a candidate in presidential elections. So, essentially, the president, although, although in Finland the president is technically elected in a universal suffrage, he or she needs the backup of strong political parties. There is very few chances that the president like, comes out of the blue in the Finnish system. Okay, this was a quick glance at two other political systems, I, I mean other than those two that we studied in the first video. This time we studied France and Finland and we had a glimpse at what political power can really consist in, in two different systems, in a presidential system and in a parliamentary system. You remember for the future and for your own study of political systems. There are many forms of political power which are sort of hidden between the lines of, of legal uh, regulations. For example, winning the presidential elections is one thing, but having the right to nominate a candidate to the presidential elections is another thing. They are both forms of political power. Okay, that would be all for today. As usually, have fun with science and enjoy your life. Bye.